Hello, this is the Surging Waves 14, 4 star only run. And today I'm here to show you that you don't need a brain to clear IS3 at all. We're going to do this by somehow clearing this IS3 run and surviving, despite how horribly you will play throughout it. You'll see what I mean soon enough. We start with Deep Cover, Vigna and Flick. It's a good thing I got Deep Cover as my free supporter, because there are stages that could kill just Click and Vigna. So Deep Cover covers our bases and the early stages. Even if I had the choice, I wouldn't take Pudenko here, because she scales better than Deep Cover, but we really need Deep Cover early. The first few stages are a pretty easy clear with Deep Cover. We just set up, spawn Q all the stuff that are AFKing at the map, and the stage is basically over from there. There is a bonus enemy here, since it's 38 instead of 37, so we retreated Deep Cover and Click to prepare for the dog. The dog is kind of a free kill on this map. You just need to place some melee operator on the tile where it AFK is right there. It would have been better if I placed Vigna there for the start, but even without that, it's not too hard to land the kill, because the dog is so easy to kill on the first floor. We place under tentacle and it's all over. We get the Vanguard hand, which reduces the offensive Vanguard's cost to zero and makes them give seven times the DP. It's fairly useful. The zero cost in particular lets you set up really quickly. This stage is a free win. I'm pretty sure Cutter can solve it, since it's not even the challenge mode. We put Deep Cover to shoot the chest. And then a tentacle alone can take care of all of the archers. There's no the Corbert, so that's it for this stage. I'll skip the early stages because they're a bit boring when you have Deep Cover. She can solve them anyway. Now, I'm wondering here if I actually want a 3-star medic, but I went with a reserve one instead. This is because I want a better medic than a 3-star later. They don't scale well enough for me at this difficulty without some great items. I would want to replace this medic in my squad anyway. And I, this way I can save some hope to potentially upgrade an operator instead of being forced to take a 3-star later. We have Vigna take care of the chest with the help of the medic. Deep Cover take care of, of the AFK slugs. That take cares of most of the stage except the metal spider, which is a bit difficult to kill because it has high res and decent damage. I should have placed the medic facing down instead of facing to the left, that way I could put Cutter in her range and then kill the spider more easily. But there's only one metal crap on the stage, so it's fine. Cutter gets one S1 off and that's enough damage to finish it off with deep cover and click. The slug is annoying, so we put a tentacle to prevent them from killing any ranged operators. And we use a click skill here because the metal crab is really tanky to rest towards the damage, since there's 30 extra rest it gets from the risks. The dice may not have been necessary, but I didn't feel like rolling RNG and dropping a slug. Now, unfortunately, on the, the emergency one spider is enough to one-shot. They do a ton of damage. And that only leaves two crabs. Unfortunately, they're a bit too tanky, so le we leak one of them. That could have been avoided if I let the spiders continue towards the tentacles. The tentacle is too far away and the splash from the spider will not hit the ranged operators. I should have used Cutter and the Bugs instead, she can kill them both herself, even at T1. We get a great item from this fight, the Needles, which give everyone a Roberta device, so it blocks two hits. It's incredibly useful, especially on high ascension, where everything does a ton of damage. 
we get, we always get the knight. We, you get one deployment limit from getting it. He's cheap and he helps early on. So it's always worth taking it, even if I'm going to discard him later. We get the medic attack speed and the vanguard and then we dump the rest of our money. The stun is also decent, but it's not too important. We roll a dice and we get an upgrade for click as well. To be honest, e 2 and click isn't terribly important, but it's there and I probably won't get a shop in a while, so might as well. I only need click for st fighting stingrays, so I can stun them. We're not going for ending stream, so we skip that. This is the quote-unquote hardest stage on the second floor, because it just spawns a bunch of enemies. They AFK for a bit and then rush you. If you have a really shitty squad, it can kill you. Otherwise, you just deploy all your shit on where they AFK and then you win. We have enough shit to deploy, so we just win. Twenty-two enemies on this stage means no duck or bear. So there's no need to set up anything. I've started always getting Jaya first. He's just too useful for fighting bosses. Though he needs to be e 2 first to be really effective. My least favorite stage on the second floor. You deploy melee operators, kill the casters and the archer, and that's it, the stage is over. It now just has 10 trash mobs and 5 spiders at AFK. The knight can almost solve this stage because he keeps knocking everything into the hole. We only really need to kill a few enemies. ASPD and deployment isn't that great for 4 stars because they take a while to kill stuff. We have the charger buff, so we grab Scavenger because she gets it too. I don't know what all the archetypes are, sub archetypes are called, but it works for Scavenger. This stage is a free win if you have the knight. It's kind of a free win either way, but especially with him. We just kill the one random slug at the bottom. And then we deploy the rest of the operators. And that's it. The stage is over. There's no chance to leak anywhere because the enemy is coming way too slowly. The agents are the only threat, but most of them go to the bottom and get murdered by Jaya. Oh, I meant the top, where the knight is. We get plus 2 deployment limit, so that counters the minus 1 deployment limit we get from the 14th difficulty, because we get plus 1 from the knight and then plus 2 from this. 3 items, a uh, longer stun duration, plus 4 hope, or reducing enemy health and speed. I really like the relic that reduces enemy health and speed. Anything that reduces stats on high difficulty is great, because enemies get a massive stat boat. For our curse relic, we get the one that reduces SP. This is the best relic you can get with 4 stars. The reason for this is that a lot of 4 star skills don't have any starting SP anyway, so it doesn't really hurt much. Cutter does, but she charges her skill quickly anyway. The nest is one of the nastier stages on floor 3. It spams a bunch of crabs. And then it has a defense crusher at the end. Or was it the demo? Same thing, really. We have scavenger and click pick up the chest. Well, Vigna protects the back lane. Deep cover tentacles are pretty useful here, since they can easily tank the tentacles for more fragile operators. Though that wouldn't really work well in the emergency. If this was the emergency mode, I'd have to have Jai fight everything on the right, which would get annoying. 
There's a few thrower enemies showing up. A good counter for them is anything with one block. Because if you block them with one block and they throw a bow at it, the bow will not attack. So you can see the bow stacking up, but they're not hitting the tentacle. This works with any one block operator. We remove all the tentacles we're not using to free up the deploy limit. Cutter was probably overkill. We could have let the, the knight do his thing with just one tentacle. We need to kill the throwers a little faster, so we bring Jaya back in. On the left side. And as you can see, we need a tentacle to tank for deep cover, so here it is. Even without deep cover skill, it barely takes any damage. On the emergency mode, this doesn't hold true. We would have need to immediately use the skill to keep it alive. So it is demolition. It's the only thing that's left, and thanks to the shields we have from that item, we can slow it down easily for click to kill it. Since that this way it takes four hits to kill even giant. The emergency stage on floor 3 can be really dangerous. I was kind of gambling here. The chapter 10 stage could get annoying. It's time we pick a better medic, so we get pure stream. I always get pure stream first. This is an easy stage, but it's my most hated stage on the third floor. It's just really boring. It's like the chapter 10 stage, where you get spammed with a bunch of slugs. But instead it's just easy, so you deploy all of your shit and then you win. To be honest, it's the kind of stage where I just out and tap. This stage always has 47 enemies, so if you see 47, it means there's, there's no the Corbair. You just set up your shit and then you go AFK until the end. Emergency or not, it doesn't change much, and we just have higher stats. Nothing interesting. We elect to get a sniper. May is really important on the 4th and 5th floor, due to Stingrays. Both of the following stages are easy, so we're just picking based on what's ahead of them. I decided to go with the original commission. We swap out Scavenger because we just don't need DP. This is a really straightforward stage. Ranged operators shoot at the croc dial, melee operators fight the casters. And that's all. There is a second crocodile that shows up later, but he also takes forever to actually get to the blue box, so it's not really a threat. One reason I like taking pure stream first is for massive range. No other medic could comfortably cover those two tiles as easily, other than one from the same archetype, obviously. Well, Chestnut can do it too, but his healing is crap, so I don't want to use him. I like to pretend he doesn't exist until I actually need him. Because his second skill gives me depression. A very easy way to deal with crocodiles is if you have Jaya or something similar to just give them the red buff before the crocodile can reach it. They, when the crocodile comes in, they don't get the red buff, so against Jaya they don't extend the chance. If they have the red buff, they could kill him, but without having the red buff themselves, they can stand up to Jaya, even if he's E1 still. So far a pretty solid run, we got great recruits, no useless stuff, 
and we have pretty good items. We get the free ingots event. As a gacha player, I'm morally obligated to choose giving more ingots every time. And I win every time, naturally. Now, I would never recommend taking 15 light, because it's unreliable. You either need to waste the safe house to do it or get some item. And you might not get either. But the other options sound that unappealing anyway, so I just went with that. The first one that is too easy and gives shitty rewards, the middle one was annoying to do. So I went to the third one just in case I got lucky. On to the boss fight. I think this is the easiest boss on the third floor on any difficulty. You just kill the detectors and then you put things in bushes and you win. That's basically it. It's made especially easy if you have the knight here, because the normal enemies really can't do much to the knight. He's a bit too tanky for them. We retreat Vigna to kill the second detector. The shot from the boss can kill the knight fairly easily, so you just need to bait that if you're using the knight to tank. giant tentacles to tank the shot. Even though he one-shots everything because of the block from the needles, he becomes really ineffective. Second detector is taken care of and the boss has no more shots. So now we use Jaya, to the tentacle, and the boss will never move again. We could have used Deep Cover skill here to make the tentacle even tankier. To be honest, I just forgot about it. Once the boss is dead, there's just four enemies left. They have fairly high damage, so they can be annoying. But if you have the knight without his second relic, they can't really do much against him. His defense is too high. We get a second guard ticket. It's not worth upgrading scavenger. Instead, we go and pick up Moose. Because she's useful for the boss later. Two items, one gives hope, the other gives SP. Easy choice, I don't need hope. Okay, the first three stages were done with little issue. And now we start the brain damage session. I want to avoid encounters, because they don't give much value compared to recruits and ingots and potentially ducks and bears. So I always go with the path that has the most fights. I do two mistakes in the first fight. First of all, it's not changing scavenger to moose. This stage requires a bit of art damage, so only having click and deep cover isn't ideal. I should have removed scavenger, since she's E1 anyway, and brought in moose to help with the boss. The second mistake is one out of habit. I'm used to spawn killing the boss on this stage, because he's annoying and I just can't be bothered to deal with him. So I usually point a medic and click at the boss and just kill him right then and there. He's not all that strong, so that's an easy kill. Click has a lot of damage. This is a mistake because the bullies are kind of tanky and I'm lacking in damage to kill them. I either should have brought Moose and used her to kill the boss, while well, Click helps with the bullies, or I should have had Click facing left and then just let the boss move around. I did neither of those, and you will see the consequences of that shortly. If Mei was E2, or if I had Kudenko, that would be perfectly fine. But I'm just slightly la lacking in damage to kill all the bullies with just physical. Let's 
especially since I can't block them, since I don't have a tree block. Which isn't a problem per se, because if I can help it, I'd rather not get any defenders in IS3. None of them perform well compared to other classes for me. We make sure to tank the boxers for Cutter, because she has low defense to begin with, and the reduced defense style makes her die instantly. We spam tentacles on the boss and click the text down with little issue. Cutter explodes because a boxer reached her, as one does. And we miss a few bullies because we couldn't kill the rat fast enough, so click was a waste of damage. And then everything else kind of died. That was just a really inefficient way to play them up. I should have had click on the left side, helping with the bullies and the normal enemies. And you can just stall the boss with tentacles and take care of them after everything else. That would have been a much cleaner run, where I didn't leak anything. Upgrading scavenger, because I already have her, might as well. Moving on to the second map of the fourth floor, this is the one with a bunch of stingrays. Now, the way that Thorn Chest is pound is really nasty, because it would, uh, if any ranged operator attacks it, they'll kill themselves in it really easily. What they should have done was deploy Pure Stream and then use Jaya, Vigna, and Scavenger to kill it as quickly as possible. Instead of that, I tried to play around it at the start by clearing up the bugs and deploying a bit more forward than I would like to. That presented some issues. It forced me to move pure stream forward as well, which limits the range tiles I actually have. I should have kept the tile I put deep cover on open for click, and I should have just placed deep cover facing backwards away from the chest, so she can't kill herself in it. Now I realize that the chest is going to be kind of a problem, so I start using operators to kill it. The mace can help with the stingrays, and get them on it. But this is the emergency, so they are fairly tanky. And we use deep cover tentacles to distract things away from Cutter, so she can leave as long as possible. Now, because I was so late deploying click, I don't have her skill available to do stun this stingray. And Mei's skill is still on cooldown from the earlier one. Thus, I have no way to kill this stingray anymore. That's a mistake stemming from the poor opening, and that's why I should have killed the chest first. Mei take care of, takes care of the next two stingrays. And Fick should be able to help with the final ones coming. However, I failed to notice the tentacle at the back died, and Fick get too shot by a stingray. If I had placed another tentacle, that would be the only leak. But now the Fick is that there's no way to kill the stingray at the top. I have maced on the one in the middle, and the one on the bottom. And the one at the top is free to go, there's nothing I can do about it anymore, due to mistakes earlier in the run. We retreat everyone so the middle stingray can take the knight to the retirement home for traitors. And we'll let them be on their way and continue. So that was six lives lost due to a series of poor planning mistakes. All of them could have been avoided with better play, it wasn't any weakness in the squad itself. The knight has left us and went on to retirement. Hopefully he enjoys his time with the Stingray. Hunting Grounds is harder than Blaze of Glory. Blaze of Glory is the one with the Wild Field. But I think Blaze of Glory is really boring and I'm tired of playing it, so I went with Hunting Grounds. Scavenger is deployed a bit forward so she can tank a shot. But the... Uh, Tower could reach Cutter there anyway, so there wasn't any point. 
to say retreat scavenger. Vigna finishes off the first tower and then she is immediately retreated. We'll need her on the top lane later. In the meantime, we cope with tentacles. Jaya plus click takes care of the thrower, very good, and then we retreat him again, so he'll be ready for the next thrower. Even though Vigna is deployed fairly late and has zero SP because of the curse item, she charges up fairly quickly, so it's not a problem. She will be taking care of the defense crushers on the top lane. The right side uh, is pretty much taken care of, Vigna plus Cutter will hold that. And now, on the left side, there's two throwers and then a crusher. I deploy Jaya on the thrower closer to Vig. This is a huge mistake that will cause problems later on. I should have deployed Jaya on the bottom thrower, because the other thrower will naturally walk into range of click. Now, we have this thrower in, in range of click later than it normally would have. If we deployed Jaya on the bottom thrower, click would have started stacking earlier and did more damage. On top of that, we can't use her skill because of the bows from the other one. She attacks them instead of the thrower, which, again, wastes her damage. All this culminates in the demolition coming through being a huge problem. We try to get Jaya set up so he can outheal him because the missions don't usually have terribly high defense. But this one does, and also he one shots Jaya. So not much of a chance there. That leaves us with one life for the rest of the stages, until, unless we find some here and there. Again, this leak was avoidable. The main mistake was where I deployed Jaya. For when the two throwers spawned at once. I should have deployed him at the bottom, so as to not waste so much of Click's damage. Next we have the flower stage. Honestly, I find this stage really easy. Ideally, I'd have Pudenko here, so she can help with killing the thing with evasion, but stun works about as well, so May and Click can take care of them. We deploy Vigna and the red tile because she is 0 DP and does a lot of damage, so she'll kill a few of them herself. And May starts working on the flower. Jaya helps a bit. Honestly, I should have brought Jaya as one, but I'm, this run is full out of pilot zero brain for me. May S2 will come in time for the last two evasion shits. I have no idea what they're called. Evasion shit is accurate, we'll stick with that. I put click down so she can shoot at the flowers and also DPS at the next wave of evasion shits later. Now here's a useful interaction to know between therapists and the stun. They heal the stun but the elemental bar doesn't fix itself immediately and while the elemental bar is resetting you're basically immune to elemental damage. So you can kind of get around the stun and get a bunch of free DPS in without fearing, fearing it with the help of a therapist medic, which is why they're better than the wandering medics anyway, in most cases, because when once the elemental bar breaks you have a period where you, you're immune anyway. And even for stun, which is the nastiest debuff you get from elemental bars, there's a great way to get around it. Normally I use the egg to send the knight to retirement, but the stingray already retired him, so now we just kill the egg. We have a bunch of tentacles left over, so we just spam them. 
even if it one shots an elemental bar, it makes little difference. We have enough bodies to throw. We have two keys, so we might as well use one. We get SP regeneration for Moose and Cutter. Not for May because we're not going to be using her S1. Her S2 is still better. The bear fight is really easy. I'd always recommend you take it. It's just a bunch of throwers running in circles. Sorry, the spear dudes, not the throwers. It has one thrower and a bunch of spear dudes running in circles and the bear. At worst, you're going to leak the bear and nothing else, so I think this fight should always be taken. You'll see why for yourself. Stuff like Totter and Umbria were great too, because they can kill the thrower. The thrower isn't that dangerous on its own, but the bow that throws it are destruction and a waste of DPS. So if you have some operator with the range to kill it, that's very helpful. Although this stage isn't a big DPS check, so even if you don't, I would still recommend taking it. I wasn't sure if the thrower AFK in the middle, if he did Vigna could stab it to death. No such thing though, it only AFKs in corners. We stall the bear as much as possible, so we can get a bunch of damage on it. It uh, runs in circles several times, so it's not a big rush to drop damage on it. And if you have a good melee operator, you can always use the red tile yourself. One minor mistake from me here is that I should have placed Jaya after the tentacle. He's not going to die to the thrower because the bows heal him effectively. And he would have kept more health on the body that's actually blocking. In practice it didn't matter though. Poor hope is completely useless for me, and the defender is also kind of useless. I grab Bubble. I don't have any use for a new one Bubble. If she's E2, she's good for out of control. Two items that benefit ranged operators, if I have Ambry or Totter, or ranged operators in general. The ranged buff is decent because it helps medics too, but I go with the melee instead. Because I'm expecting to use Jaya or Moose to fight the boss, and a 100% attack for them is great. Now we get to the point where we kind of want to avoid fights. This is the Blade Dance event, same as IS2 with some new items, but there is no Blade Dance this time. We get the flower that reduces cost instead. I decide to do the spread because I want to go to the shop and to recycle an item, see if I can get something better. Now, this is the easiest stage in IS3 overall, when accounting for floors. Its difficulty is kind of a joke. Something I noticed here is that you may notice I no longer have any zero cost operators. So what happened is that the flower overrides the vanguard buff for the cost. I think that's kind of lame, so I'll get rid of it later. So all you need to do on this stage is just kill the two things that spread the creep in the center and then you win. Because you have a bunch of territory without the creep on it.
As you may have noticed, being slightly brain damaged is a theme for this room, so we'll keep exploring her. I meant to damage the spreader a little, so that I could kill him that I easier later would click. But I forgot to retreat the giant, so now he gets to spread his pool all over the map. Oh no, we're playing CC now. We leave Moose there to see if we can contain the ghost pool. Jai has silence on because we don't have a Pudenko. So he can mostly deal with the dot shit. And we redeploy click heading for the bottom lane. While pointlessly making the map much harder to play than it needs to be. We almost leak a ton of dogs because of not having anything help me, and we end up leaking one dog and one wraith. Which almost kills us, but we have three lives, so we barely make it through. This was the easiest stage in IS3, played horribly. Great proof that a brain is not needed for this mode. We get two useless items. And we pick up a second medic, because that's ideal for the boss fight. Maybe it would have been better to recycle the item that gives us 15 SP, but the f I found the flower lame, so I didn't want it anymore. I got the attack speed for snipers, which basically just benefits me. But resistance is kind of me on the other item. More stuns is more welcome. This is the other easiest stage in IS2. IS3. You just deploy a bunch of ranged operators and win. If you have the needles, the guy with the saxophone can't even kill anything. So it's just a complete free win. Because of the 100% attack, Jai can almost kill them, even with his S1 at full stacks. We accidentally let Click die, so we use Cutter to and Vigna to clean up. They take so long to reach the blue box. Even if you have no damage, you still kill them in time. They get tired of my lack of damage, so they go and kill themselves. Out of second hand embarrassment. Mission accomplished. 
we get five lives, which we're definitely going to need for the boss. And as a second operator, I pick up Ambrio. If I can upgrade her, that's great. She's very useful for the boss. I'm kind of lacking in life to do my usual strategy of kill phase 1, lick 20 enemies, then fight phase 2. So we'll have to actually fight the boss properly. Before we do that though, we make sure to wood the shop completely. Once we wood the shop, we use a dice to reset it, see if we can get anything else. We got a couple recruit, that's great, it makes our medic more useful, so we get that too. And we upgrade her into E2. Now that the shop is completely wooded and we're prepared, we are going to rob Kenot. This may drop an item, so it has some value in, in it, technically, but that's not why we're doing it. We're fighting him because he's there, not because he has something to loot. We set up the most range damage possible. Even though he is E1, Ethan is ideal for this fight, because he can keep enemies in place. I would have liked to have had Pudenko here as well, but no such like this one. This stage is mostly a straightforward DPS check. You just need a bunch of range damage to kill the enemies before they reach you, since they aren't really tankable. It don't help to do the work by extending the time of the DPS check. There's a bunch of throwers spawning, but their attack is way too low, so they can't do anything to drive. They can't hurt other operators, as you can see. And we have Cutter deployed, so she saves Vigna. She can just stay there until the end and help with the last wave. We have A to charge items, so she gets to cast her this one occasionally. Jaya can just one one the crocodiles by being dropped right on top of them. Well, almost. We use Ethan's skill immediately, so it's back up for the next wave. This makes it less efficient for this wave, but better for the next one. It's ideal if we you can hold Ethan's skill until they actually start moving, but we're already leaking something here, so we're kind of forced to use it. We level up and gain one extra life, so, but we don't get any item, so we, we basically lost two lives for nothing. Not ideal, but didn't expect much. As I said, I'm basically just fighting him because he's there. And finally, before the boss, we have the drone stage. We have May with attack speed and click, so this stage is kind of a free win. The emergency would have been a bit annoying. But in this case, all we need to do is set up, and we win easily. We bait the missiles. I waited before deploying May here, 
to avoid the explosion, but I have the block anyway from the needles, so that was a pointless wait. It only loses a tiny amount of DPS though, so it won't hurt as much. There's nothing Karin can attack immediately without being hit back, so we wait a bit before deploying him. It would have been better to use Jaya instead of Vigna to tank the rocket, even though Vigna is 0 DP, so she can generate DP now from the ground enemies. But this tank is kind of slow, so it's not a big deal, we can still deploy on time. We have Pure Stream there to set up Cutter on a forward location. She gets SP when hit, so even with no ground enemies, she can stack up just fine. And she's pretty good at deleting her enemies. We deploy Umbreo, even though she's E1, her attack is still decently high. And Kitter, Cutter keeps deleting the uh, air enemies. Click and May are only there for cleanup. The final part of the wave has a bunch of bombs, which will kill Cutter. But Click, May and Umbreo can take care of those without too much hassle. And all of the other ground operators are basically just bodies to throw. The bombs just one shot cutter before they even enter her range. Because of the needles, Vigna survives two bombs there. And that's the stage basically done. All that's left is the last wave of bombs and drones. As long as you can bait out the drones, the drones move faster than the artillery. So that's the stage all over. We get the rug, which reduces elemental damage for ground units. Nothing too useful, but we're fine with that. We get a third medic, we click on Chestnut, and we'll absolutely be using him in this fight, because his elemental regeneration is so useful. And now we set up the squad we need for this fight. We need Click, May and Cutter to just deal with Trash, Pure Stream and Perfumer for healing, and Jaya and Moose for the boss. Vigna is there for a bit of DP and to catch Stray Leaks, and now we're wondering about the final SWAT. We end up settling on Deep Cover, because her tentacles are very flexible and lets her deal with a lot of lanes at once. We have too few lives to actually leak the boss, so we need to fight it head on, properly, unlike last time. So this time we'll demonstrate how this boss is actually killed with 4 stars. Like before, we have May control the center, just so she can kill the trash, click take care of the stingrays. And we then deploy two medics to help with healing. We have a Reen to tank damage for Perfumer, because he has more health than Perfumer. He's also in range of both medics from there, so he's not going to die too easily. We have no Umbrio this time, so we have Deep Cower killing the crap on the side. With the help of May, of course. The range crabs are almost done spawning. Once they're done, we can retreat deep cover for later. The boss almost one shot stuff as usual, but with the damage being spread across multiple bodies, he doesn't quite have the damage to land the kill. Mace stuns the boss, 
so now it's landed. It damages crazy and it kills click. And now we just spam tentacles to get them to absorb some damage from the boss. To keep Moose and Perfumer alive for long enough. What are we waiting for? For the boss to enter Moose's range. Once the boss is in range, we just block him with Jaya. Now Jaya has the massively increased attack from the Badge of Honor. We have Cutter taking damage and DPSing and Moose debuffing. Because Moose gains 2 SP every uh, SP every time the boss hits, she has increased SPD, she gains SP passively, she can keep the S1 debuff consistently. This means that the boss cannot get his full damage out on any attack. With this, the boss, the first phase is down, and we start redeploying our stuff. We retreated deep cover because we'll need more tentacles on the right side soon. For now, we ignore the left side, we just don't have the resources to deal with it properly. We wait until the boss is captured, and then we deploy Vigna to fight there. We needed to debuff the boss first to avoid a one-shot happening. She now shares a bit of the damage, but with the most default, that survival. Click kind of explodes, and we replace them with deep cover. This is a really big mistake that I should not have done. There's no reason for deep cover to be there, I just need the tentacles to bait, not her damage. Even though the boss is dead, deep cover is just in a really vulnerable location with the highest target priority. And the moment the tentacle dies, she gets one shot by two stingrays. Because of this I now have a problem. I don't really have a way to deal with the stingrays coming from the right. And they kill her in as well. Giant may take care of everything in the center, so this leaves us with 6 lives and 9 enemies all coming through. 3 crabs, 3 stingrays and 3 throwers. May would never redeploy in time, so I don't care about her. I dropped click to stow the crab as much as possible, and Vigna barely catches it. Vigna kills the first crab, and Jaya is dropped to take care of the other ones. Thanks to the SP relic, his S2 charges in time. He takes down the two crabs, and Deep Cower is back just in time to catch one of the throwers. Two throwers and three stingrays leak through, leaving us with exactly one life. And Deep Cower to take care of the last thrower. In my opinion, if I had played the stages better, I could have done this run with zero leaks. There was no leak that was forced due to bad luck or a hard stage, all of them were just practical mistakes on my end. I think this serves as decent proof that you don't need to be particularly skilled to play through IS3, especially if you know the stages. Even if you make a ton of mistakes like this, the game gives you a lot of resources that will keep you alive. And that only leaves the difficulty 15 run. I'll post that tomorrow.